And joining us now to talk about the fertilizer market, a lot of news there here this week. Vice President of Fertilizer at Stonex, Josh Linville, is with us. Josh, good to catch up with you again, sir. How are you? Hey, I'm doing good. My hair is turning uh, gray faster than I'd like with the markets like they are, but we'll handle it. Yeah, I was going to say, man, uh, there's been a lot of news that I think uh, could really just kind of catch people uh, off guard here this week. And a lot of it centering around uh, issues going on in Europe. So mm -hmm. I, I know that this is kind of a, a whirlwind this week, but catch us up on some of the latest. What are we seeing going on in, in Europe and some of the issues that are feeding into the global fertilizer market right now? Yeah, and I'll you know I'll take a very long story and make it short. Uh, natural gas prices over in Europe are obscenely high. Uh, we track the Dutch TTF price very closely. Typically, that price is in the single digits, you know, four or five, six dollars in MMBTU equivalent. Um, Monday, by the close of their business day, prices had jumped to seventy. By Tuesday morning, it was eighty. As of this morning, it was still over eighty. And the problem with that, obviously, natural gas is a big feedstock for nitrogen production. Our worst case scenario, our biggest bull factor that we have been talking about here for quite a while is now playing out. Multiple European production sites are now announcing they are shutting down production. Now, it could be a short term situation that these natural gas prices correct, but a lot of people you talk to in the market itself is sitting there pointing and saying that's not going to happen. So the market is now scared to death of just how much we are losing in Europe and what that means for global supplies. Well, and you mentioned some of those plant closures and watching it. And I mean, it's, you know, it feels like it's almost one after another here, Josh. And that's definitely scary to watch. And I know even just uh, this morning, you were talking a little bit about uh, the urea marketplace as well. I mean, it's just, it, it seems like one component uh, in the fertilizer space after another. We're just, we're watching all of this kind of unravel, you know, kind of like a perfect storm, so to speak. Yeah, it is. And so yesterday, when we first started to see these announcements be made that plants were going down, it was mostly Poland plants. With well, okay, at least it's it's contained to one place. This morning, it's branched out. You know, it's the UK. It's more in Poland. It's Hungary. I mean, it's there is a lot of plants that are going down. I mean, this is a situation where prior to this week, we had figured European production was about 60, 65 percent of normal. I mean, I'm I don't have the firm numbers. But I would guesstimate now we're getting into that 20, 30 percent range. I mean, it's a major loss. And Europe is one of those regions that the fertilizer market in the past has just kind of said, oh, it's not as important as many think it is. Yeah, it's a demand point, but they're fine. We're starting to find out they are very, very important. Well, you know, you mentioned we're seeing natural gas prices spike in Europe and we're watching that closely. When you think about natural gas here at home in the U.S., we're entering a critical time with fall, for, you know, fall harvest and possibly some dry down. So, what are your thoughts on the natural gas side here in the U.S.? I know we hit that ten dollar mark, I believe, earlier this week. Uh, talk about nat gas here at home and what we can expect here in the short term. Well, I'm I'm by no means a natural gas expert, right? I, I struggle to keep up with fertilizer half the days, but. When I look at it, when you see the price where it is in Europe, it's going to be very easy for the market to think, well, why shouldn't the price be here? And once you have a market that starts feeling like, well, why not? It doesn't take very many points to kind of back that point of view. And all of a sudden, a perception becomes reality. So, yeah, I, I'm kind of in the mindset where it's really hard to see our natural gas prices starting to drop. Now, I don't think that's going to result in any change in our production rates here in North America because the price of gas just determines how much margin are they making? Are they making a lot of money or are they making a lot of money? It's not going to change. They're not going to produce one less ton because the price went from eight to 10. Uh, Europe right now is the global uh, decider. And unfortunately we are, a, again, we are a supply driven fertilizer marketplace. We've never experienced this before and it's uncharted territories for us. Let's talk at the Gulf here. The U.S. Uh, have obviously watching prices there uh, on the rise a little bit with everything going on in Europe. What are you seeing down in uh, New Orleans right now at, at the Gulf? What are we looking at for you know prices, et cetera, here and, and demand and, and everything under the umbrella, Josh? So from uh, a demand standpoint, we still don't see anything changing today. That's not to say that discussion isn't happening. We're continuing to use 92 million acres of corn and Let's face it, it's very, very difficult to cut back your nitrogen application rate on corn. It, it just, it doesn't happen. Um, I know we all talk about it, hell, I talk about it, but at the end of the day, we very rarely see that happen. But 
we are seeing the price of urea. It's been the most active since the close of business Friday. The price of urea in the Gulf of Mexico is up about $100 a ton. It's been a violent move. And the only reason I'm not talking about anhydrous and UAN is because producers aren't really offering a price out there. They are pulling back their salespeople and saying, hey, let's see how this plays out. You know, they're all about making money. And right now, there's no point in selling at the lower price. They want to wait and see how bad the European thing gets before they come back out to the marketplace. But one thing I can darn near guarantee, and I'm not one that gives guarantees very often, their price ideas are definitely higher today than they were last week. Well, and that's a great point you brought up because I've heard from some producers even earlier this year how a, a lot of retailers were trying to push them to lock in their needs at those higher prices. So, you know, we've seen kind of this lull and wonder, okay, if I'm a producer looking at all these issues starting to crop up, if I can, is this maybe a time to lock in some of those uh, those fall fertilizer needs if I don't have them done yet? I, I'm an advocate for the fall. Um, that is a conversation I've had with my family. That was advice I gave to them. So I can't sit here and say, this is what I'm doing for my operation. I don't farm, um, but my family does. And I, I absolutely the advice I gave them I actually shot my dad a note this morning and sit there and say, I'm really glad you locked in that fall anhydrous because I can guarantee you that price ain't there anymore. So yeah, unfortunately, short term, this doesn't look like it's going to correct. Not anything's possible, but there are just way too many factors at play right now that are pointing up and not down. Very, very true. Josh, any other final thoughts uh, you want to share with us here today? Again, I know this uh, this global fertilizer space continues to be a wild ride, and I think it's just going to require uh, probably a lot of vigilance from us as we move forward. Yeah, it is. And I'm trust me, I'm not taking any joy in this. This isn't a lot of fun because I know for – the American farmer, this is real dollars out of your pocket. And I, I, trust me, I sit here and get angry myself and I got to step back and say, okay, calm down. This isn't effective. This is just the market doing what it's doing. But I know how angry it's got to make the American farmer. At the end of the day, I understand that. But when you go to make a decision, you've got to set that emotion aside. You have got to look at this and just sit there and say, okay, the price is up. Well, look at, I, I'm a corn guy, right? I love looking at corn. How's the December 23 corn price look? It's currently 610, 615, 605, depending on the minute. But how does that relationship work? Am I, work? Am I okay with buying the inputs and selling that D23 corn against it? Am I okay with that? And if that, if that relationship is profitable, I don't see anything wrong with that. If I can get through the 2023 crop cycle and my worst decision is a positive number, I am going to be tickled pink. And I well, think we, that, yeah. that's how I look at it. I mean, that's just my point of view, right? I don't have skin in the game, but that's how I look at it. Well, you definitely keep track of things, and we appreciate a little bit of insight, and it's something we're going to continue to watch. As always, I appreciate the time. With that, Vice President of Fertilizer at Stonex, Josh Linville, thanks for joining us today. We'll talk to you again real soon. Thanks, bud.